Hey, how y'all doing? It is the 10th of July. It is a Tuesday. Yes, it is. And it's been a wonderful time since I last saw you. Wonderful time. I had a great birthday. Um, CD sales are, are, are good. Keep it coming, folks. It's um, not going to be around long. And um, as a result of having my birthday, I had um, some people people be nice to me. So I, was, I can show you a couple of records that are new to my collection. This one actually I need to take the paper off. Um, I like Ladytron. Ladytron is an electronic band. And um, I like their album Gravity the, Gravity the Seducer. And uh, while shopping for something with my birthday money, I saw that there was this remix album, which I don't think I knew about or don't remember anyway. I picked it up. Gravity the Seducer remixed Ladytron. This is a nice uh, limited edition. Love the graphics. Lovely color vinyl. I mostly like these remixes. There's a couple of remixes to me that already sound either it's me or they sound dated already. Or what it is is maybe it's like the um, exaggerated to me the Skrillex thing that he does I forget what you all call that electronic thing the Skrillex wah 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 and all that stuff and to, to my ears that sounds uh, like it's gonna like date really bad uh, maybe I'm wrong because it's like it's it's like a trick to me it sounds like it's a it's a trick that's used to vibe up the audience in the club while people are dancing and doing drugs, you know, and the movie is, and the music is moving and shaping and whoa, whoa, and all that stuff, you know, which is cool. But outside of the club, those couple remixes where that is happening are a little bit annoying. But uh, the Mirage and White Gold, those remixes in particular in here, I like those really well already. Lady Tron, I'm not sure where they're from. I like them though. I like Lady Tron. <clears throat> Just right quick, I got one other record, but right quick, it's music is interesting, you know. Um, and um, this is partially, a re you know, um, going out to folks who think they have a have an idea of who I am and what I like. You know, you don't. I, you know, I've heard more than once in the last couple months where I'll show something and I'll hear back from a viewer. I'm surprised that you like that, you know, as though you know me and I don't. I mean, you watch a few videos and you think you know me. It's, an, it's another one of those little things where I like to share where we have a lot of behavior and, and, and ideas that we just kind of take for granted and make assumptions that if we paid a little more attention could increase the, the uh, quality of our interactions with others. By that, what I mean is, you know, you do, you can't assume to know someone just by watching a few videos about them. So, with that in mind, it's interesting how I'll be doing things, and all of a sudden, I'll, I'll hear in my head the song The Rhythm of Love by Yes. And it's a radio song. And as pop as it is, I can't hear it on the radio here in Omaha. The radio is so badly controlled regionally, it's absolutely um, a death valley, the radio. So um, I like Yes. I have a, a collection of Yes. I don't try to stay current with all the remasters and how they keep getting your money. But I have a copy of this, Big Generator, and the song is on it. And I've played it a few times. It's a great pop song, The Rhythm of Love. And I love Yes. Big Generator. Um, most of this album I like. Um, what's the other one? Shoot High, Aim Low. I like that song too. So this has been on the stereo a couple times recently. The other album that I was able to pick up with birthday um, gifts was uh, this one, which I've only listened to a little bit. And I have to listen a lot because Mick Karn, who has passed away, he was the bass player in the band Japan, Rain Tree Crow very unique bass player created his own style not he doesn't sound like Jaco Pastorius but like Jaco Pastorius 
when you hear Mick Karn, he, no, he, he, that's him. He doesn't sound like Percy Jones. He doesn't sound like Jaco. You know it's Mick. His writing style was also very obtuse. I think that's the right word. Just you're not sure where it's going and why it's doing what it's doing. You have to keep listening and listening and listening for it to start to make some kind of sense. The Concrete Twin on K-Scope. He plays pretty much all the instruments on here. Has a drummer that he um, does some sampling of the of drum tracks on. But uh, I'm glad I have this. And like I said, I like music that is challenging. Not music where it's like, okay, this is challenging, but this is really bad. This is really stupid. Some music it's like, well, yeah, there's really nothing here. Other times, like when I first encountered the band Henry Cow, or when I first heard Pink Floyd as a, as a young kid, as mystified, as well as intrigued, it's like there's something here I need to find out about. And that's my impression of the Mick Karn music, the Concrete Twin. I have um, two of his, actually I think I have most of his other stuff between CD and vinyl, mostly on CD. Um... I recommend this though. Uneasy, uneasy listening though, I would call it. McCarn. What are some other records sitting down here I can talk about? Well, here's one I played that, uh, this is, I have a few comments. I hope I remember them all. Showed this on, on a line recently and it caused some, some talk. Uriah Heep, the English heavy rock band. Love this band. This is their first album, the U.S. version. Hard and Heavy, I believe, is the name of the actual album, and it has a completely different cover in the U.K. Um, of like a face with spider webs or cobwebs on it with the mouth open. Really strange image. Uh, this is a very cool album. Now, what's funny to me is I've seen Uriah Heep twice back in their heyday in the early 70s and I love David Byron's operatic over the top voice you know as a kid it only maybe fleetingly did I wonder is he gay you know remember my age you know I come from the age where well we're still we're still struggling with ignorance regarding um, people's sexuality but as I was listening to this for the first time in a long time and hearing just a few of the lyrics, because I don't pay attention to the lyrics, it's like, oh my goodness, it is so obvious that he's dead now. Come on, don't hang up, computer. Keep going. I just saw that glitch. I hope that it doesn't create a big mess on the video. Great songs of hard rocking as well as some prog. Ken Hensley on keyboards. Mick Box guitar. I really enjoyed seeing them live. Mick Box was a joy to watch live. He was having so much fun and drinking wine on stage and didn't care. It was really fun to watch them just jam out. Jam out. Um, I've listened to the, the Coltrane some more and this is, this, is a, this is a treat. This is a gift. I'm glad that Robbie Coltrane, his son, was involved with this being reissued. I'm glad it's out. Okay. Something else right quick. Um, I didn't look up to tell you about, but Tim Brady. This is something that I found used years ago. It looked interesting. The man has a background, but I haven't looked it up to tell you. But Dreams, D-R-E-A-M-S, Dreams by Tim Brady. A guitarist and it's this is good he has a un, an interesting style it's uh the kind of challenging um in the region of people like henry kaiser and elliot sharp um a good player with interesting ideas dreams a really nondescript cover in my opinion i say that word a lot but i i i I think I need to keep saying it so newcomers and people who don't watch all the time understand. I'm just sharing my thoughts. I'm not telling you anything as though it's like, you you should think this. This is what I think. But record covers like this, to me, have always been a, a, a drag. It's like, you know, 
why couldn't you give it a good cover or an artistic cover? But that's just me. Good stuff. I've been so busy playing gigs and selling CDs and celebrating things with my friends that I have not been doing a lot of listening. Um, and I'm excited about the this new CD. Before I before I wrap up with it, so if you don't want to hear more about it, you can leave, you can tune out soon. But I will share this. I listened again to Dave Newhouse's The Muffins, Secret Signals 2. I got all the way through it. This is a delight. This is truly a delight. I highly recommend this. You don't even have to be a fan of Rock and Opposition or Canterbury to dig this. The guys improvise really well together. There's a sense of humor throughout as well. Um, the Muffins, in my opinion, there it is again, sorry, are an American musical treasure that I wish would be discovered in a large way, and it probably won't. The Muffins, in my opinion, the Muffins ought to be known like ZZ Top are known. That's what I think, okay? So just uh, to wrap up, my CD. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the uh, com comments. Yes, this is soothing. That is what this was about when I was making the music, um, dealing with depression, all kinds of things. A lot of times I would make music that I needed to hear that I wasn't hearing anywhere else. I hear people say I've heard uh, already com comparisons to Eno. I even heard one person say that they thought. The um, track that I made a video for sounded similar to the chord progression in Donovan's Atlantis. That's a nice um, compliment. But I want to share with you that the, the actual real influences, if any, on the way that I was writing and creating this music really wasn't Eno, even though I love Eno. But the person in my mind, if I were to reference them what I hear is Tony Banks of Genesis, Popol Vuh, um, Steve Hackett's guitar playing, um, John Hassel. Uh, someone said it in a, mentioned him a while back in comments. Harold Budd, uh, Darudi Colum, um, the quieter passages of stuff like Harmonia and Cluster. Those are the actual. I'm not trying to sound like anyone. Uh, but those are the, probably the points of reference more on the surface in my mind than Eno, although Eno is in there. He is an influence. But I just want to share that, you know. He, the, word, he, the name Eno comes quicker than many when people try to reference this aspect of my music. But those others are very important and maybe more important as far as helping influence me. I've already sold 100 copies of this, people. I, it hasn't even been out a week. I'm actually out of copies waiting for another 100 to be delivered to me. So go ahead and order. They should be here tomorrow. Um, Randy sent them out Saturday. It's just been overwhelming, the response. People in Omaha have hardly even started to buy it because I'm not putting it in stores. It's, you know, you buy it direct. Those have all been um, um, pretty much uh, mail order all over the world. You know, I sure hope it makes it to you in El Salvador. You know, I'm really, really dismayed that there's so much corruption that people in, in El Salvador can't even count on getting their mail. I've m sent stuff to this, this person in, in El Salvador. Uh, they've got some, but the last thing I sent flyover, it never got to him. I know I sent it. The other thing is, this is my second CD, Derek Number 2, released in 2004. I've still got a few dozen of these. And there's an order. This is 10 bucks too. And this is good. Matter of fact, uh, I really focused on this one. As, a, as opposed to this one being a collection of things I've done over the years. I had to wait for it because it was hanging up. I'll uh, leave the link on my blog page. Pick up on this, guys. This is good. This is good stuff. 
those of you those of you that have the vinyl version with the different cover also know that the vinyl version has a different lineup of songs okay okay the last thing I'll say is this you know for the last two months I've asked folks to um, you know support me by sending in a little money to keep me online because I don't have a steady job other than my music and art well the release of this by Randy's alternative music out of Pittsburgh Randy is doing profit share with me so I receive half of what is made on this um, if for no other reason buy a copy of this to uh, show me support but this is really really something you ought to own look at that come on and then you heard one track pick up on it guys folks people whatever that's another thing I was visiting with a young lady who's having an art show at the gallery coming up and she's young and very sexually active you know and was giving me all these terms that are coming in to use like cisgender and all this stuff and I'm respectful to it but the bottom line to me is that I just respect humanity you know and if I don't get all these words and terms right to me that's not the issue that's getting hung up on the details the bottom line is what's happening in your heart and how are you treating people and how are you treating yourself if we can make some movement on that besides all this other political bullshit things could get better but they're not we are just really a mess right now it's the end of the Western Empire some of you that watch me probably think I'm I'm, a, I'm nuts but I know I'm telling you accurately what I see think about it in the way I said it and look at what's going on